Welcome back everyone. We're just finishing up the edge filling and edge dressing on this Strat. Now in this case I'm mixing two colors, extra dark walnut and deep red mahogany to get a match to the rosewood fingerboard. So just kind of put them both onto the hot knife and swirl them around a little bit. I think we go a little, a little bit darker than that. Put a bit more walnut. So I'm actually using the hot knife as a as a palette. So just put a little spot. Now like you saw in that last video, I'm just getting enough material on the end of each fret position and then we'll go over it a second time. Now here we go again with our emery board. So I'm just using this to get that, like you saw in the last video, just get that real craggy stuff off and get it more or less leveled.
So once again we're taking that deep red mahogany and put some of that on there first. We've got a pretty good color mix there and just let that melt completely. And once again, it's our 400 grit. There's our 600 grit.
the saddles for the Babbitt's bridge are much higher than your standard Strat saddle. So this thing's pretty well finished up. I did want to point out that the second string pivot screw at the, at the leading edge of the plate and the fourth string, those two screws that are here on the pickguard, they needed to be removed in order for those two saddles to move far enough forward. Not a big deal, you still got four more screws in there to pivot and this is basically locked down anyway. It's dive only. There's five springs in the back. So we're ready to go in, plug this thing in and really check it out. And that's the final call on the values for the 10 to 46 at concert pitch, this particular scale length. I am going to smooth it out a little bit more before I glue it into place, but that's done. So we got the locking tuners, compensated nut, the Babbitt's bridge, we got these uh, Duncan pickups, EVO frets, compound radius. A lot was done to this guitar to bring it to this stage. Let's go check it out. Here's a quick wrap up of all the alterations that have been done to this Squire Strat. So we've got the locking machine heads, and of course we've got the compensated nut, all, all brand new EVO frets, compound radius on the fingerboard, the Babbitt Strat Bridge. Now the way these saddles work, it's a concentric cam mechanism. The set screw on the one side of the saddle rotates the cam to raise or lower each individual string. Once you get the radius where you want it, then the other set screw locks it into place. Now the challenge was with this guitar was to get the neck set right so that you could get an exact radius match within the parameters of movement for these particular saddles. And actually had the neck on and off a few times to get that angle perfect so that there was 100% adjustability in these stock Babbitt saddles, which there is now. I did end up settling with a 24 thou strip of brass shim stock, and that seemed to do it. That seemed to give us all the adjustment we needed. So I did heat up and bent that tremolo arm so it's, yeah, it's easy to grab. You can basically curl your palm around it uh, without actually using it, but it's right there. It's there to use at any time. Now you saw me mention earlier in the video the second string and the fifth string saddles could not move far enough to be able to line up the intonation. Well once I got the neck tilt exactly where it needed to be, the second string did have enough travel. But the fifth string I still needed to leave that fastener out in order to move that enough forward. It was butting up against the uh, pivot screw. So, so I did end up leaving out that one A string pivot screw in order to line up the intonation 100%. I have two chord progressions that I looped in two different areas of the neck. First progression is this. Second progression is this.
Okay, there's a nice clean tone. So there's your neck pickup. These two. Middle pickup only. These two. And bridge. I'm still kind of monkeying around with my garage band thing. Kind of made the uh, second attempt, you know, to kind of put something together. That's what you're hearing throughout the video, that sort of funky thing, and the, you know, the sort of the drip and lead 80s rock sound. Those are two tracks that I put together in the garage band program. I thought it might be a little more interesting to listen to than the dust collector. <laughs> I'm kind of moving along here and I've because I've had this time off since the surgery, I'm dedicating it to kind of finally figuring out how to use this garage band thing after 20 years of doing nothing with it. Yeah, so it's it's been an interesting learning curve. Still navigating that one. Anyways, hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next time. Cheers.